of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 1 many of us don't care about reputation dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor so do a little fully that is in reputation for wisdom and honor what does it mean somebody who has been known to be of reputation somebody who has been popular worldwide Remember the time of Jimmy Swaggart, that great evangelist, that he had his secretary pulled him down. He was a man known for reputation, but little fully bring that great man down. When you are known to be respectable, and they now hear that you that are respected in the church, honored by the people, you are the one gossiping, that little fully can destroy your reputation. You are known to be a respectful person. They honor you. They exalt you. And you are the one they met where they don't even think they can meet you. That little fully can destroy your reputation. Reputation is a currency spent by man. Hmm. Can I go on? 1 Samuel 2.24 First Samuel Chapter 2, verse 24. These are one of the non leg that preserved me and preserved my ministry till today. Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. Ye make the lost people to, trans to trans transgress. The sons of Eli, they had a very terrible, horrible reputation. Reputation of committing crime against God and humanity in the temple. And the father said, your reputation has even spread to heaven. And among all Israel, how they steal money, on the, when they are counting money, they steal tithe, they steal offering. They even steal meat. They have a special kind of spoon, fork, that they went and dip in people's pot when they are cooking. For dedication in the church. You can hear, nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear. No good report. Hearing the word is one thing, preaching the word is another thing, doing the word. It is the doing that gives us reputation. If we say we are going to close by one and we close by three, it's a reputation. If I say, they give me 30 minutes and I spend two hours, it's a reputation. Say, that pastor, if you give him 30 minutes, two hours will not go. It's a reputation. You go somewhere, you eat uncontrollably, and they know you to be a gobbler. It's a reputation. When they keep matter in your hand, and the matter sneak outside, and they label you a gossiper. It's a reputation. There are many of us that I will give 12 things that reputation does to man. When you are conscious of it, anytime you are doing something or behaving, and you know and you think of the impact that behavior, that attitude we have on your reputation, you'll be cautious. First King 10 6. Listen to me. Your reputation always go ahead of you. One day, somewhere, I, have, I invited somebody to say, uh, if we minister to some place, come there, say, eh, that's us. I'm not coming on. I said, what happened? Ah, that pastor. So the reputation of the pastor has gone ahead. So I'm not coming. First King 10, 6. She said unto the king, It was a true report that I had in my own land of thy act and of thy wisdom. This was the queen of Sheba talking in the palace of Solomon. By then, no internet, no television, no CNN. How does the report of Solomon's wisdom from Israel go to Ethiopia? Before Solomon, Solomon has never been to Ethiopia. But his reputation of wisdom has gone to Ethiopia. 
You may not know the extent your reputation as a person has gone. And you may not know the extent that reputation is working against you or working for you. He hasn't been to Ethiopia. But the reputation has gone. Our reputation has entered houses we have never entered before. When they mention your name, what is the first picture that comes to a people's mind? A liar? A honest man? A crafty man? A dubious man? A careless man? A great man? A prayer warrior? Honest, faithful man? A giver? What is the picture that first flashed people's mind? Immediately they mention your name. That is your reputation. Are we here? Deuteronomy 2.25. Reputation has a lot to do with our lives. Reputation has a lot to do. Deuteronomy 2.25. This day will I begin to put the dread of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the whole heaven who shall hear of report and shall tremble and be in anguish because of thee. God said, by the virtue of the display of my power in your life, I will send out a reputation about Israel that you are a terrible country having a great and awesome God. I will do a miracle in your life that people that hear your name shall tremble. I will create that reputation for you. And Israel had that reputation to today. Mention Israel anywhere. The first thing that comes to a postman is powerful country. Powerful nation. God's own nation. Mention it anywhere. That is what reputation can do. Something happened and the people of Jericho, they said, Yo, we have had a report of what God has done among you. And since we hear our heart has been crushed, we become powerless. Reputation carries great power. Carries what? An influence. Take your reputation serious. It travel, it's travel before you. Before you arrive anywhere, your reputation is already waiting for you. Either to work for you or work against you. Either to do what? To work for you or to work against you. Reputation is waiting. And in this modern age of internet, it travels faster. Hallelujah. It can make people admire you or hate you. It can make them accept you or reject you. Reputation. Reputation is your brand. Companies call it brand name. They call it what? Brand name. Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Lipton, uh, whatever like that. All those multinational companies, they maintain their brand name. But the church, we are always careless about names. Every church has a brand. I went to a church in North Carolina. I told the pastor, create a brand for your church. And let them know whether you are a prayerful church or what church based on the word. The church must be known about something. When they mention mountain of fire, you know what they do. If they mention deeper life, you know what they do. If they mention that every church has a brand. Every church has a reputation. That church, ah, they close quick. That church, ah, you can't let no begin, you can't know the end. Reputation. Every minister carries reputation. That pastor is a holy man. That pastor, ah, he loves money. That pastor, oh, his anger, terrible. It's a reputation. The kind of image that comes to people's mind, it matters a lot. In 3 John chapter 1 verse 9, 
taught John chapter 1 verse 9. If you companies marry, spend a lot of money on their images, who knows here? Who knows what? They spend what? A lot of money to maintain positive reputation in the public. They spend, they do a lot of things. All their customer relation, customer caring is about image. Amen. Hey, 24 hours we are online. Call us, we, somebody will answer you. It's about reputation. I went and bought a carpet yesterday where I was trying to unlock the carpet, the thing got on. Near auto zone, I walk inside the gate, I say, your carpet is no good. And they collected the agreement that one again. It's about reputation. What you do as a believer, when you say, I am from God pleaser, there's a kind of reputation you are trying to create there. Christianity is a reputation. The first time they label them a Christian is about those people that will follow Christ. They know them that by their appearance, by their teaching, by their way of life, they know them as Christ follower. They have developed a reputation as a Christ follower. So John 1 9 says, I wrote unto the church, but Detrophris, a terrible man, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receives or not. The man has a reputation of liking post. A love position, but not responsibility. They love being honored in the church. They like it, being honored in the church. Being called to the high table, being called to the high seat. But responsibility for the gospel, no. That was the man reputation. When they mention your name in the church, Pastor Alice, they mention your name, the Christ, so and so, so and so, 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 minister, what image comes to the mind of the people? Hallelujah. Am I wasting your time? <sighs> Genesis 39, verse 3. The book of Genesis, chapter 39, verse 3. It's a deliberate thing for a commission. It's a deliberate thing for every great man of God. It's a deliberate thing for you, wherever you are, to create, to be careful about the kind of reputation you create. When you say yes and your yes is yes, yes is a reputation. When you say no and your no is no, it's a reputation. When you say yes and your yes does not mean yes, it's a reputation. People, people may not talk. Say, who promised you? Say, so, so, uh, you are your own. No. Don't trust that promise. You. That's the way you talk. Oh. The, the worst part about human beings is that they will not say it in your presence. They won't say it. He promised you. Don't trust that promise. You find your way. Thirty-nine three says what? And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Joseph had the reputation of success. On anything he lays hand, they prosper. It's a reputation. He has a reputation of perfect interpreter of dreams. That any dream you tell this man, he will unlock it. And that reputation took him to the palace of Pharaoh. That reputation opened the door of promotion, of lifting. That's why great people try everything possible to make, to make sure their weaknesses are hidden. Because immediately it comes out, it destroys their reputation. That's what Ecclesiastes 10 we read, that little fully, little fully is a blunder to them of reputation. They try to hide everything that is negative, everything that, is ne that, is, that will work against their name and their, and their interest. If you say, I don't care, and what anybody like you should say, you don't care for your reputations. And you don't know how damaging that reputation it is to your vision and your goal and your destiny. 
if you know how damaging the reputation is to your labor, you won't say, I don't care. I can drink anywhere, I don't care. I can smoke anywhere, I don't care. I can fight in the church, I don't care. Whatever you can say, care. Please care. Care. Because that little thing you don't care about can be the major abatros, the major delivery, the major demon working against you. Am I communicating? Hmm? <laughs> Reputation is the general opinion held by people against you. General what? General opinion. It is based on your past behaviors. On past what? Behaviors, character, habit, attitude, achievement, exploit, loyalty, faithfulness, and what you live for in life. These are people with fear. There are people that have fearful reputation. When they, if anybody mentions Hitler, Hitler, what comes to your mind? Hey! If anybody mentions Idi Amin of Uganda, hey! or anybody mentions uh, uh, this man of Iraq that has died, they have been killed. Saddam. Oh, Sama. You know, there are people that immediately they mention their name. You say, ah, terror. And there are some people that have a very wonderful reputation. Great reputation. That, ah, he's a great man. When they mention Mandela. Mention Martin Luther. You have positive image in your heart. Positive reputation in your heart. When they mention wishes of, of Pharaoh or Jezebel, what do you think of Goliath? You know what it means. Jesus has a reputation of being a healer, a miracle worker. And it was that reputation that attracted people to him all the time. All the time. When they get to Gadarin, the woman of which of blood, everybody will come into Jesus because they know that he carry a reputation of being a healer. It was the reputation that was attracting crowd. Reputation can either attract crowd or drive away crowd. See what reputation does for Elijah. In the house of Naaman, the lady said, "If the lady don't even know the lady one on one, but he knew he has a reputation of a miracle worker. He said, if my master can go to Elijah, this leprosy will go. Reputation. Reputation can bring people down here from Las Vegas, from Indiana, from uh, mention any, every nook and corner of America. Reputation will carry people to anywhere." It attracts like honey. And the same way it dispels people like shit. Poo -poo. I bought call shit here. Yeah. What, <laughs> what do you call it? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. What I'm saying is that it can attract, it can drive. Some people remain helpless because of the terrible reputation they have. Say so you want to borrow her money, ah, you may not get it back. This has done so. Go and ask him. This has done so for him. This has done so for him. By the time they mention two or three people, the person that want to help get discouraged. Am I talking to you? Yes, sir. So as we go on, what are the things that we can do about it? Reputation of God as a miracle worker. Let's open our Bible to the book of Joshua, chapter 3, 5, verse 1. Joshua 5, 1. Joshua 5, 1. Joshua 5, 1. And it came to pass, when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until were passed over, that what happened to them by that report? that their heart melted. Neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. The reputation of what God has done in Egypt 
created the way for Israelites in the wilderness. They fear their God. When people hear testimony of, your, of, your, of God's wonder in your life, they will fear your God and respect you. It is that reputation that will make people to follow you. It makes evangelism easy. It makes winning soul easy. Reputation makes those things easy. Hallelujah. If, uh, let's go just to save time. What are the things that reputation of Elijah as a humble and very humble servant, 2 Kings 3, verse 11, 11 he has a reputation of humility. That was Elisha. Everybody knew him. But Joseph has said, is there, not a prophet, is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the king's Israel servants answered and said, here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which pour water on the hands of Elijah. Are they there when the, when the man was doing it? No. But it's a thing he does regularly. It's a thing he does for Elijah regularly. So they know him for doing that. Say, hey, a servant, the, man, the person that pour water on Elijah, he has reputation for humility. That word attracted double anointing on him. Other sons of prophets cannot do it. Say me, pour water on Elijah. Never. I can't do it. But Elijah will stoop low to do it. We stand by the man. After he finished eating, we pour water to wash hand. He does that regularly. And everybody knows him. The, the one that always pour water on Elijah. On Elijah. Are you known for humility? Do you have a reputation for humility? In the church? Do you oppose his vision or support visions? Do you have a reputation of a giver? Do you have a reputation of commitment to vision of where you worship? Do you have a reputation of sacrifice for where you worship? Or a reputation for, of, of those who, who work against the growth of where they worship? That reputation is important. When they mention your name in this church, what picture comes to members' mind? To other members' mind? Is it as a committed member? Or a troublesome member? What picture? Is it as one that supported the ministry or give the church problems? What picture? Here about, I will give about eight things that reputation does. The book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 6, 16, verse 1 and 2. Acts of Apostles. Chapter 16, verse 1 and 2. Then came, to, then came he to Debbie and Lystra. And behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman which was a Jewish, and believed, but his father was a Greek, verse 2, which was well reported of by the brethren. Can you see that? Well reported of by the brethren. He has a very good, robust reputation in Lystra and Iconium. And that endeared, his reputation endeared him to Paul. Paul never knew Timothy before. But the testimony, the reputation, the report, he was hearing everywhere he turned. And he said, I want to know that little boy. And when he met him, he pulled him to himself and encouraged him. And motivate him and he became a great bishop eventually reputation number one things that reputation does it can open door or close door it can do what open door or close door number two we can see how it opens door for joseph in the palace of Pharaoh, his reputation. It opened door for Naman, for Elijah, before Naman. Reputation connected Naman to Elijah. You know that? 
and reputation connected Solomon and the queen of Sheba. Reputation, it opened door of connections. Number two, it can attract favor or drive it away. Reputation can attract favor or drive away favor. Number three, it can attract help or block help. Reputation can attract help or block help. Number five, it for it can bring respect or disrespect. You know, when you would hear news, some, uh, some uh, gov government heads will travel to some countries and they will be pestering them with egg. You've heard that several times. They will be protesting because he has got a reputation at his point of arrival before his arrival. So that is what reputation can do. Number five, it can, make a, it can make people honor you or dishonor you. Reputation can open door for honor. It can also open door for dishonor. Sometimes you go to some places, people accept you, they love you, you wonder. It is because they have had good things about you. And you see somebody that will go somewhere, before his arrival, they have had bad reputation about him. Everybody says, hmm, hmm, hmm. He will see rejection. The rejection did not come because a demon was there. The rejection came about because of the kind of reputation they have had. It can be right or wrong. Eventually, you may know. So before you arrive, they have told us that we should be careful of you. That you are a terrible person. Ah, you can betray, you can backbite, you can do this. You can. So they will have said bad things about you, which you may not know, which influenced their own decision and character and attitude towards you. And if you are well accepted and they love you, somebody have spoken good about you. See that person coming to you, oh, wonderful. When I first come to America, he's the one that hosted me. Host me. Oh, he spent money, he spent it. Oh, he's a great person. So what they have said about you before you arrive at your destination is already preparing ground for you for acceptance. Paul wrote a letter to the Romans. He said, uh, he mentioned two couples there. See, they nearly removed their eye for me. Whatever assistance they need, give them. Their rep reputation of their sacrifice for Christ has gone ahead of them. And if you want to break church, you say, eh, who's coming there, Reverend you? Be careful, you can break church. That acceptance will not be there on arrival. It will be as if they put a hostile against you. No. Number six. It can bring promotion or demotion. Reputation brings what? Promotion or demotion. Number seven, it can cause acceptance or rejection. It can cause what? Acceptance or rejection. You know, why are we saying all these things? You can be able to examine yourself and know the areas that you may have made some errors or mistakes that has affected your reputation before important people, before your, in your community, in your surroundings. And we can make amendments. It is possible. Hallelujah. Number eight, it can hasten progress or cause backwardness. It can hasten. Why do they ask for recommendations some places before employment? You should know about your reputation. Hallelujah. The book of Acts, chapter 5, verse 34. We have read it earlier. There stood there up one of the council, a Pharisee named Gavaniel, we have told you, because of the man's influence. He rescued the disciples, the apostles, from punishment. He opened the door favor for them, and he supported their ministry. Let's go to 1 Samuel, chapter 21, verse 11. What reputation did for David? What reputation? 1 Samuel, chapter 21, verse 11. 1 Samuel 21, 11. 
what reputation did for uh, David. And the servant of Akish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? They did not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul had slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. This was a foreign country. The exploit of David, the reputation of his accomplishment, has gone ahead of him. And when the king had it, he was afraid of David. And David instantly turned to change his behavior. As a mad person. And the man said, is this the person they are thinking about that they kill thousands? Can this kill 10,000? Can you push him away? Is it the kind of person that Saul was pursuing? It was true. He used wisdom to save himself. His reputation as a fighter has gone ahead of him. As a great warrior, that is his reputation. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. What can we do in case our reputation has been dented somewhere? Number one, to fear God sincerely. To do what? To fear God, to repent and fear God. Remember that when Paul wanted to join himself to his disciples, they were afraid of him because of his reputation as a persecutor and a murderer of those that preached the gospel. They were afraid of him. So it took Paul almost five, six, seven years to prove himself to other disciples that he is no more the same Saul. It may take time for people to believe you, but you can start somewhere. Number two, desire and determine to live a righteous life. Desire and determine. Once you have known the area of damages, it can be controlled. Number three, be conscious of your reputation when dealing with others. Be conscious of what? That's what the companies do. When they say call customer care, if you buy bad product, if you do this, we have to attend. You know your bank, your bank have customer care. And you have, you have confidence in them that maybe they stole your debit card or your credit card or you lost your account or whatever or you see that somebody tamper with your account. You know that there's a ready, ready line 24-7 that you can call. They can block your account, they can help you out. The same thing, Josh. People need help. Hallelujah. People need help. So number four, know the importance of reputation. What do I say? Know the importance of what? So if you still think on the impact of the stealing on your reputation if you are discovered. And call you another person's wife behind Think of the reputation you are going to that will happen if your escape is, re, is discovered. You want to commit any crime? Before you commit it, think of the impact of the crime on your reputation. You want to fight in the church? Hey, I'm not saying you can't be angry. You can be angry. And you can't control it. You, can't, you don't know how to channel your anger. Think of the impact of your anger in the public, in the church. They call for offering, they call for donation, they call for pledges, you raise your hand and come out, they write your name in the paper, three days pass, seven days pass, you didn't pay it and redeem it, and you still come, already you are building a reputation. This thing looks simple. What may not know? Anytime you come out, who? Give me the list. Who are they? One, this one, cut it, cross it. This one, cross it. This one, cross it. It's on serious. These three, I know them, they, can, they will pay. I'm a pastor. I'm talking to you, fact. Hallelujah. Yeah. Then, number five or six. Five, determined to change habits and attitude or behavior that has given you bad reputation. It's a, it's, a, it's a desire if you want to change it or not. 
It's your choice. But whatever you know is giving you bad reputation before the people, you determine to change it. Think over it. You need changes, you want progress, change it. If you don't care for progress or whatever, leave it alone. Hallelujah. Then, uh, the last one, Art of Apostles, chapter 4, verse 36 and 37. 36 and 37. Number 6, begin to do well to others in clear conscience. When you want to repair reputation, begin to do well to others with clear conscience. Do unto others as you want them to do to you. Do unto others what you want them to do unto you. If you, if abusing others is your trademark, if you enjoy abuse, abuse others. If backbiting and gossiping others is a good thing and you enjoy, do to others, they do to you too. If accepting others and loving them is a good thing, when you do so, they will do that to you also. If snubbing others is the, the right thing, snub them. And they too will find their way. Amen. At 4, 36 says what? And Joseph, who stood by the apostle, was son named Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite of the country of Cyprus, 37. Having land, sold it, and brought the money, and laid it at the apostles' feet. This man has a reputation of his crazy giver. Of a mad giver. And that reputation stands. He had been doing wonders before then. For a man to sell a whole house and give the whole proceed to the church. A belief in what the apostles are doing. A belief in their commission. A belief in Christ's commission. A belief in, the, in, in Christ. And to show that belief that he believed in evangelism. He believed in taking care of the widows. Every activities of the apostles. He believed in it. And his conviction and belief in those things influenced him to go and sell the house and bring it. Let's rise up.